welcome to Health Options with me, Rabi Abdella. Health Options is a program that not only tracks government's policies on health, but helps you to make informed choices about your health. A lot of people question the need for food supplements such as vitamins, minerals or micronutrients. Part of the arguments in that regard is that the body gets the required nutrients from dietary intakes. Others hold the belief that the body gets or takes only what is needed for metabolic activities. While such is tenable under normal circumstances, the emergence of the global coronavirus pandemic, however, underscores greater need for supplementation as a lot of emphasis is being placed on the role of the immune system as a fantastic defense mechanism against COVID-19. Join us on Nature's Scanner for an enlightenment on why you need food supplements and what to go for. The Central Bank of Nigeria, as part of its policy response to the COVID-19, introduced the Health Care Sector Research and Development Intervention Scheme to help strengthen the public health care system with innovative financing of research and development R&D in new and improved drugs, vaccines and diagnostics of infectious diseases in the country. Specifically, the intervention scheme is designed to trigger intense national R&D activities to develop a Nigerian vaccine, drugs and herbal medicines against the spread of COVID-19 and other diseases through the provision of grants to biotechnological and pharmaceutical companies, institutions, researchers and research institutes. The scheme aims at boosting diagnostic manufacturing of critical drugs and vaccines to ensure their sustainable domestic supply and reduce the bulk manufacturing cost of drugs, herbal medicine and vaccines in the country. It is expected that the facility will be utilized by Nigerian businesses involved in the healthcare industry, especially during this period of COVID-19. On this episode of Health Options, we take a look at Nigeria's efforts at repositioning R&D towards finding local solutions to COVID-19 and other infectious diseases, as well as communicable and non-communicable diseases, in view of the Central Bank of Nigeria's Healthcare Sector Research and Development Intervention Scheme grant. My guest is the Director General of the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRID, Dr. Obi Adigwe. You'll get to meet him shortly. Thanks for joining us on the program. Glad to have you join us on Health Options again, Dr. Adigwe. It's my pleasure to be here. Take us into this scheme yeah. by the CBN before we go further. Since COVID-19 started, as you are aware, mm. I have pushed for uh, the Nigerians, for the government, for all stakeholders to prioritize research and development because without research and development, you cannot move forward as a country. That's a fact. Mm. So what we've been able to achieve is to enable an improved individual, institutional and collective understanding as well as appreciation for the role of research and development. So this particular gesture by the CBN, the Healthcare Research and Development Grant that has been put forward, makes that one of the first tangible outcomes mm -hmm. of that particular change in appreciation. Mm -hmm. And it's very critical, as you are aware, based on interventions that we've put forward, you've heard uh, President Mohammed Buhari, you've heard Secretary Mustafa, you've heard Ministers Ehaniri mm -hmm. and Mamura constantly on the television saying that we must, whatever is coming, we must subject it to the relevant research and development. That's a strong policy directive for all stakeholders to key into and it's an, it's it's because we've been able to articulate the role of research and development but i must commend the cbn for being one of the first institutions among the very many institutions that could have played that role for coming out and putting its money where its mouth is to say, yes, we understand the relevance of research and development. Here is so-so-and-so amount of money. How much are we talking about? The well, the, 
uh, we were looking at about 100 uh, billion. Data tells us that in, 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 in the world, in, the, in Africa, and indeed the world, Nigeria's spending on research and development per capita is one of the lowest. So while it is a good gesture, it's a drop in the ocean. But what is important about this particular but, but grant? But don't you think uh, uh, the outcome of this uh, drop in the ocean could mm. ginger for more to be, you know, absolutely, go that I, way. absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, I, 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 I will commend the CBN for starting and pushing it forward. NIPRID is uh, uh, is put forward as one of the key institutions that will help to frame this particular grant and midwife it to ensure that uh, positive results are achieved at the end of the day. It's, Whilst I say it's a drop in the ocean, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to disparage the amount. That's not what I intend to do. But I'm comparing what has been done to the need that needs to be addressed. So CBN has taken a step in the right direction. There are other stakeholders that need to now key in. And consistently, I have been calling out those stakeholders. There are foundations that have a significant amount of funding which they have put forward for other activities those foundations need to understand that funding research there is nothing better than funding research and development your funding research and development will lead to the, the generation of innovative ideas it will lead to development of ho homegrown solutions mm -hmm. it will lead to uh, ensuring that socio-economic objectives are realized so that it you know funding research and development is i would argue one of the most altruistic things that a, a foundation can do there are development partners who previously used to prefer uh, funding the importation yeah, of commodities of commodities yes. this for years we have been arguing the concept of medicine security yeah. COVID-19 has now justified our argument. It looks as if, in fact, a colleague was saying that, uh, uh, OB, it appears that you guys were looking at a crystal ball to predict exactly what is happening now. Because we said it. We said that manufacturing needs to be localized. And at that time, our argument was that you know, you need to focus on the proximity of manufacturing. And while you're focusing on the proximity of manufacturing, you would ensure that people within the milieu where those commodities, where those drugs are being used, mm. are also benefiting. And previously, development partners used to prefer the importation, like I said earlier. Mm. However, this has shown everybody that the most sustainable approach to ensuring access to healthcare is manufacturing locally and that keys into this particular grant the same way that previously we used to have a double bottom line but nowadays it's international best practice to do a triple bottom line is the same way that every responsible company needs to now start saying at the end of my financial statement, mm. what CSR have I done? Exactly. In my CSR mm. component, how much of my CSR have I put forward? Yeah, we are hoping that uh, this will indeed serve as a catalyst to such uh, companies and uh, private sector players, you know, to look the way of research and development. Now, I'm, I took a look at eligibility and I know that uh, for your own uh, institute there's no doubt about the fact that NIPRID qualifies for some of uh, the criteria that I have uh, gone through mm -hmm. and um, I, I know at the beginning of uh, you know the outbreak of COVID-19 in the country you presented um, a hand sanitizer oh, for yes. the Federal Ministry of Health. I actually and carried yeah, it around. And, and in the case of an interview that mm -hmm. I had with you mm -hmm. You said something about some uh, immune boosting formulations that the institute, you know, had been working on. How will this catalyze that so that Nigerians can still ha start having access to such, you know, because when it is locally manufactured, it means, you know, it's going to be affordable mm -hmm. and accessible to mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yes. Very good question, Rabi. So, in addition to NIPRID being eligible, like you earlier mentioned, we are also an institution that 
uh, is, has been recognized as being pro-collaboration. So even other institutions who have the intention of keying in, but at this particular uh, time, at this particular time, they have done a self-analysis and have identified that due to certain weaknesses in their systems, they may not be able to key in immediately. NIPRID has opened its doors to collaborate with those institutions. Our mandate gives us uh, the ability to uh, put together you know, a collating body for all pharmaceutical and healthcare related research and development. Now, coming to your specific question about our interventions, again, you're quite right that uh, in addition to our hand sanitizers. Yeah, because uh, the PTF recently yes. made a very disturbing, uh, you know, observation where yeah. it's, I uh, know, I think it was, um, you, you. It was our research. Exactly, yeah. that um, it was 60% of the hand sanitizers in circulation yeah. Yeah. within the FCT did yeah. not even meet the yeah. standard requirement of 60% yeah. alcohol yeah. Uh, uh, base. Yeah. So this is again, uh, some of the good work that my crack team of scientists have been doing in NIPRI. There's, there's no day, there is no week that we don't bring out innovative research. And like you rightly said, uh, when we undertook, uh, what for the sanitizers itself, what we did was that we realized that before coronavirus hit Nigeria, what we did was we did a scenario analysis and we identified that in Europe, in China, in Asia, where the coronavirus hit, very quickly, commodities like this, you know, were wiped out mm. of the shelves mm. and people couldn't good. get them. Yeah. And that increased yeah. the spread in those settings. So we quickly said, what can we do in NIPRID? to forestall that from happening here. And we came up with, you know, validating our uh, sanitizer uh, 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 model and uh, validated it, presented it to the Honorable Minister, like you said, I think you were there right, during the presentation. And additionally, we collated all the local manufacturers who had the capacity to do it, you know, to produce sanitizers, shared our formulation with uh, those who required uh, an upskill in the technical capacity and spread it. And so what it did was that those kind of disruptions you saw in the developed world weren't seen here. So you didn't see the kind of empty shelves that you saw. Even at a point in time, the hike in price was quickly brought back down because more people, our strategy was to get more people locally to be able to manufacture hand sanitizers. And we achieved yeah, that. Some, a lot of people, some of them were doing it the wrong way. Anyway. Well, again, that's where I'm coming to. So okay. that's another thing. Okay, yeah. So when that happened, again, we got reports. And as scientists, we don't deal with anecdotal evidence. What we do is we go out to the field, we collect data, we subject the data to analysis, and then we give you an empirical report. And so that's what we did. Like you rightly said, there was now a lot of people involved in sanitizer manufacturing and you know the quality became an issue and that could also defeat the purpose that we aimed at achieving from the first instance so from that report what we did was we quickly alerted the minister and as well as copied NAFDAQ, who is the regulatory agency in charge of ensuring the monitoring and evaluation of these products. And we told them, this is what we're noticing. And like you rightly said, again, I want to use it to commend the administration of the day for their understanding and appreciation of science. Uh, Secretary Mustafa picked it up and flagged it and told Nigerians, I think he literally you know, pulled out the big guns to say, we are watching. This is the result of the research that NIPRID has done. And we as government are watching. And if you don't take care, we're going to come down hard on you. And so that is how you link, you know, something that people are rumoring about, anecdotal evidence, to evidence-based hard science to policy making. You can see the change. Yeah. But I know that NIPRI, NIMA, as government institutions, you know, that are saddled with uh, some of those things that Nigerians should look forward to, you know, have always had the challenge of uh, 
financing mm -hmm. you know so and now we have this little might not be that much but mm -hmm. it's something to move mm -hmm. us from where we, you know we've been mm -hmm. so what are those immediate um, things? We're talking about implementation mm -hmm. now, since you are in touch mm -hmm. with the CBN, mm -hmm. what stage are we now? So, because I'm sure Nigerians are in a hurry to see I agree with there. you. Even before coronavirus, we had engaged CBN robustly mm -hmm. for this type of intervention. So we're intimate, we're intimately aware of the of the happenings there. I am happy uh, to inform you that uh, the board of experts, which is the sort of like a gatekeeper for this particular grant has now been inaugurated. Mm -hmm. What that means is that it is now official. So the CBN has called them together and told them that you are now, you are now an officially constituted body. You can now start your work. That's a good, uh, uh, and good update to, to, to give. On a final note, uh, Dr. Adigwe, uh, I know that um, NIPRE as an institute has a lot of uh, products on its shelf mm -hmm. waiting to be tapped. Mm -hmm. And um, those formulations are lying on the shelves. Mm -hmm. You equally told me that uh, you have some immunomodulation formulations mm -hmm. that could... Um, mm -hmm. So how soon? You know yeah. that could see all well, those could see the light of day in terms of access now. Mm. You know for Nigerians to Ni Premium, like you mentioned, is a product which uh, it, you know comes from a, a plant that is widely uh, known to grow in Nigeria, and uh, my team has done uh, the entire preclinical studies. Okay, so uh, the preclinical studies consists of uh, in vivo studies consist of in vitro studies and some form of in silico studies so all this has been done okay and the preclinical studies that we have done has given some uh, 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 incontrovertible evidence that this particular product right mm. has the potential to improve the immune system of you know uh, uh, someone who would potentially take it so the next level now is to now subject it to people who have COVID-19 because we've repurposed that particular formulation for COVID-19 and as you're aware so we've put together the entire protocol for Nipremium clinical studies and we've received uh, uh, ethical approval. So we are at the cusp of now receiving fundings to now begin the clinical studies. And I am very confident that in a matter of weeks and at most months, you know, we will be here again on uh, 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 health options with the very insightful Rabbi Abdallah <laughs> giving you an update on Nipremium. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Adigwe, for making our time to be with us on the program. Thank you, Rabbi, as usual. It's my pleasure to give Nigerians an update in research and development. <laughs> Next is Nature Scanner, where you will find out why food supplements are very important at this critical period of COVID-19. The micronutrients are the vitamins and the minerals. Now let's go back to nature. When all is well and good, the micronutrients are actually derived from the soil. That is how the roots of the plant or the trees absorb these micronutrients and then they go up they are used. Then either through the leaves or the bark or stem or whichever part of the tree or vegetables or fruits that we take, we contain these micronutrients that are derived from the soil. However, in recent time with agricultural you know, practices and increased use of fertilizers, pesticides, they have been leaching of these micronutrients from the soil. What do I mean by leaching? Leaching is means the kind of drainage. What happens ordinarily, these micronutrients are actually recycled. That is from the soil, they come up, then we take them, then some of the leaves we drop, then they will go back and then it keeps recycling like this. So definitely what we, we see today are sources of micronutrients uh, like plants and then some other parts like fruits 
they no longer contain the same concentration of micronutrients as it used to be. Studies have been done in the United States where they monitor the micronutrient levels in, in certain you know, plants like garbage or I mean tomatoes over 50 years. And at the end of 50 years, they saw that there had been a decrease or depletion of about 60%, which means that um, magnesium or, or potassium that used to be in that uh, garbage 50 years ago had gone down by 60%. This is the reason why we have to supplement. Micronutrients should be taken at what we call the normal level. That's for an individual who is actually I mean, heavy. There is what we call the maintenance level. All he needs is just the maintenance level. However, in disease state, these levels of micronutrients, what they call the daily average requirement, normally goes down or is get depleted by a hundred fold. So take for example, let me use uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D, the normal levels it should be in the range of 30 to 70 nanograms you know, per you know, deciliter. However, if for a normal individual you can say, all right, he is in that range, so he is okay. And clinically, this should not be less than 70 nanograms per deciliter. But in disease state, we've seen patients that their vitamin D level is less than 10 nanograms per deciliter. The best way of getting vitamin D is from the sunlight. That's if you stay in the sun and then receive the sunlight, it is usually su uh, suggested that from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So during that, those hours, if you stay outside the, uh, out, uh, outside the sun, your body is enabled to manufacture enough vitamin D. I'm talking about a normal individual who has no disease challenges, as we age, the levels of these vitamins that get in our body actually lowers. So, if you just depend on that, ah, man, you got to question yourself. Because you need to remain on top there. The best way to do it, especially in disease, severe disease state, this is why parental or injectable forms of vitamin D should be taken into, the, into consideration. The same thing applies to other micronutrients. What I take, let me give my example. I am on vitamin D. I take both the injectable form, which is high doses, as well as the oral, you know, form. Then vitamin C, which has very potent antioxidant, you know, properties. It also scavenges, you know, free radicals that are the cause of over 200, you know, diseases. There are other products, melatonin. Melatonin is a very good um, supplement. It is actually what we call a bioidentical, you know, uh, hormone. Because our body actually produces, you know, melatonin. But here again, as you age over time, also as you get challenged over time with, you know, diseases, the level of melatonin naturally, you know, decreases. So you need to supplement it too. So there are melatonin, you know, we have melatonin, you know, tablets that you can take, you know, orally. It is very important. It's also known as a hormone of sleep. It is what induces our own system. It detoxifies our body. It also boosts our own immune system. Then other products that um, you can take or do to take is something like uh, CoQ10. CoQ10 is also in tablet form. We also have it in injectable forms. Then there is what we call the quercetin. The, it is also in tablet form you can take, but uh, this is the major list of what you need to take during this time to actually maintain your immune system. And that is health options for this week. Take responsibility to protect yourself and your loved ones against COVID-19 by observing the existing safety protocols. A quick reminder that you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions at healthoptions at nta.gov.ng. My name is Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.